our third presenter of the day, hand over to Ellie from Lendology, who's going to talk to us about the various loan products and I suppose kind of sort getting a loan product and um, the advice around it. I think, Ellie. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. Um, so my name's Ellie. I'm the Operations Director at Lendology. And as Paul says, today I will be talking about the work we do in partnership with local councils. So at the end of today's session, I would hope that everybody here would understand the loans offered and feel confident talking about Lendology and understand how to make a signpost or a referral if you work within our local council areas. And I will check in with everybody at the end just to make sure that I've met those aims and objectives. So um, Lendology are based in the southwest. We currently work with 18 local council partners and we have done since 2005 actually our first group of councils joined us. Like any other lender we are regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority so that means all of our lending is legitimate. Um, if you like. And we're also members of the Responsible Finance Organisation um, because we're a social enterprise, we're not for profit, any profit we make goes back into um, the communities we serve. And essentially, we were set up by local councils to offer an alternative to um, grant funding for homeowners, where homeowners needed to make essential repairs to their property. So if a property fell below decent home standard, the councils up until 2002, local councils may have had um, grant funding to issue. Um, but central government said in 2002, you need to think of ways to make that sustainable because they're not going to keep topping up the um, funding pots. So we bid um, with a consortium of councils to central government and we were awarded two million to set up a loan scheme, which just meant that everything we lent comes back into the scheme and it can be relent again. So it's just a recycling pot of money. So to date, we've lent over £20 million, um, of which £12 million has already been repaid to be relent. The rest of it hasn't been lost, I can uh, assure you. It's just out there and it will just come back um, as and when loans are repaid. In terms of our applications, 87% of the people who apply, we can lend to. And that doesn't mean eight we lend to 87% of applicants because people might drop out because the family and friends fund the works. It might be because they decide to, to save up or they decide to cancel the works. But, you know, that's a pretty high proportion of people that we're able to say yes to. Now, for the people that we can't lend to, because obviously we're looking at lending responsibly and affordably for that client, both now and in to the future. We would um, always look to see what other grant schemes there are. So it might be that some councils reserve a bit of grant funding. It might be that they could get uh, government, central government funding around renewables or boiler stuff. So we're always keeping in, in touch with local organisations and central government grant schemes that might we might be able to signpost people to. So our impact then, um, we always talk about being much more than, than just a loan organisation. And we measure our impact by asking our clients every year, the you know, what other impact they felt from having a loan with us. So we found in our research that um, a homeowner will live with an issue for five and a half years before taking any action. You know what it's like if your roof's leaking, it might be just a trickle, might just be the gutter and you sort of ignore it and ignore it thinking, you know, I'll deal with it when it gets worse. But I've literally been to people's houses where they've got buckets dotted all around the upper floor where the ceilings come through. I'm sure you guys have seen this as well because we're really keen as an organisation to be talking to people who are often in people's homes people you know out there in the front line are the ones seeing the problems and being able to sort of signpost clients to get advice and support with um sort, sorting out the issue um 70 of our clients said their home had caused them stress depression and anxiety and 65 percent of clients felt much more in control of their situation after having a lendology loan and 70 percent said their um, anxiety had reduced and their financial well-being had improved which is is fantastic because even though you're taking a loan you might be, you know, your, your anxiety around that loan or how you're going to manage will probably outweigh the, you know, talking to a loan provider and understanding a, a sensible solution. This is just a brief case study. Um, I'm always banging on about roofs because in actual fact, roofs and central heating systems, replacement boilers are the biggest sort of category of home repairs that we lend for. Um, I think with roofs, they're so crucial to a home, but they're also really, really expensive to repair. So I, I 
imagine that's why people can't don't have the option so much to to save up for them um, but this client had such a bad um, leaking thatch he was emptying buckets and mopping up when it rained he didn't feel he'd be able to fund the works without a lendology loan and he now feels more independent and, and able to invite friends and family into his home which again is is an impact that is more than just having a loan it's about being able to share your home so, um, you know, a very typical story, which, like I say, I, I know you guys will probably see every day as well. So when we were set up by councils um, and we did our first lending in 2005, it was very much about owner occupiers who needed to do um, home improvements or repairs. Then as our partnerships with our councils developed, as their strategic housing aims developed, we were able to add on different loan schemes um, to help different sectors of the private sector, if you like. So we support people who live in park homes, um, landlords to repair their properties for their tenants, bringing empty properties back into use, uh, renewable energy. We've seen a big increase in um, applicants looking at installing renewable energy um, measures or improving the energy efficiency of their homes, but also disability adaptations loans, which many of our councils offer under their policy. And obviously, I'll talk more about this um, with you guys now. We've just launched a new website um, page about our dis uh, disability adaptation loans. This loan is for people who may have access to DFG, but have a contribution to make. Um, they can apply. In some areas, the council say, well, if people can't can't wait for a DFG assessment. Um, they can, if you like, self-serve, which I thought was really interesting listening to Rachel's um, discussion earlier about sort of reviewing the current process and looking at how people do those self-services or remote access for um, straightforward works. And I think that probably ties in really nicely with some anxieties that um, councils and OTs have about people taking a loan over a grant because of the the waiting time, but not having that advice from an OT, you know, up front or having some sort of engagement um, with the product. So I think, um, you know, looking at a loan option might be a good, a good solution that works alongside the sort of self and remote access um, work. So, um I don't think I'm coming to the one in June, but I might be up for coming to the one in Plymouth to talk more about that if you think that would be useful. Also, we have had people apply um, where they want to future proof. So we get a lot of people who might be in their 80s. They can get up the stairs currently, but they're worried, you know, in the next year or two or they've got room downstairs and they want to put in a, a wet room, um, but they can still access their upstairs bathroom. Clearly, that's not going to be funded by a DFG. But if someone wants to fund it um, future proof, then um, some councils do allow that under their disability adaptations loan scheme. Just looking at the chat as we go along. Yep, lots of different repayment options. So yeah, I can talk through those in a second while I'm on to my next slide the key loan features so everybody pays a fixed interest rate of four percent that's regardless of how much they borrow or their financial circumstances in actual fact with our disability adaptation loans some of our councils have even subsidized that those loans so they're fixed at naught percent so the client pays no interest but obviously they are repaying the loan either monthly or um, when they sell the house in the future there's no setup charges um, but because it's public money we lend we do register a land register registry uh, title restriction which costs £20 and that's the only fee that we pass on to clients um, if they do decide to go ahead with the loan. There's no early repayment charges and people can make um, overpayments on the loan at any time and the minimum loan is £500 and the maximum loan is 20000 or more. Now each of our 18 council partners as you all well know have their own policy so some will have 20000 as their maximum loan some might go up to 50 or more so it depends on the local council um, but we would obviously talk through that with every applicant that comes through to us. We do an assessment with each client so we'd look at their current income their current outgoing, so all their bills, their food, their travel costs, any secured borrowing, so their mortgage or second charge borrowing, and also any credit cards, loans, catalogue debts, family debts that people are repaying. Once we've got all of that information, um, we work out a proportion of affordability. So we assess everybody on a capital repayment um, loan basis. So that does what it says on the tin, you repay the loan um, every month and over the fixed term, the loan comes to an end. And 
the maximum term for our capital repayment loan is 15 years. So we often see people say, right, OK, yeah, I've got to get my roof fixed. It's going to cost me £10,000. I don't want to um, impact on my monthly outgoings too heavily, but I want the flexibility to make overpayments when I can. So sign up for a 15 year term and then probably about a third of our clients repay early in any event because there's no charge for that. If somebody is over 55 um, and they can't afford a capital repayment loan, we would then look at an interest only loan. So there's no term on that. The client would just pay the interest on the loan. And then when they sell the house in the future, they'd repay the original uh, capital borrowed. We don't have that many clients on that loan product because we tend to find that even people who are retired or with a very limited income, there is some affordability for a um, capital repayment loan over that longer term. And then again, for people who are 55 or over, if interest only is not affordable, and we would then look at what we call an interest roll-up loan. So there's no monthly repayments, but interest on the loan compounds annually. So if someone borrowed um, £5,000 today, it would take about 17 and a half years at 4% before that um, they owed us double the amount they'd originally borrowed. Now, again, that tends to be for people who are much older than 55. They might be, say, living in a property on their own, only got like a state pension, and they need to have a really expensive job done that they just don't have a monthly um, affordability for. So it's not a very, um, we don't do very many of those loans, but it's a good option for people. So I'll just look at some questions as we go along. Uh, We don't put a charge on the property. um, So it's not like a a mortgage or a legal charge. We literally just register a title restriction, which means that when somebody sells the property, tries to remortgage the property or transfer ownership, we would be notified and we would expect to be repaid at that time. Yes, we would consider covering, um, we're working with any local councils across the UK. Um, We're in talks with lots at the moment. Um, We don't have our own capital to lend. So as a council, if we set up a partnership with you, um, the council would need to invest their own capital to run the scheme. But that also means councils can, can choose their own policies, what types of homeowners they want to support, which types of works, what interest rate they want to set. We're talking to lots of London um, councils. So yeah, happy to work in London as well. What makes us different to any other lender? Um, we were set up basically to support people who wouldn't be able to borrow financially um, for mainstream lenders. So that might be because someone's got a bad credit history, might be because they're retired or they're in receipt of benefits as their sole income. And since the pandemic, we've seen a lot of self-employed people um, being turned away from um, mainstream lenders. So we, we definitely support that group of people much more. And as I say, because we do, we have a tele- we have a conversation with a client, we can understand their finances now and into the future to make a decision on affordability with the client as well. You know, we're not selling anything. Our um, our team aren't rewarded on on sales or volume. It's really about having a conversation. And with the DFL, Disabled Facilities Loans um, Scheme, we will always ask clients whether they've sought out a DFG, you know, explored that avenue first. So, again, we're not selling loans as the only or first option. We have an online application for people who are able and willing to self-serve that will ping through all of the answers to us and then we will contact the client to have a chat with them about their options. For people who want to ask us questions or want to do a assessment over the phone, people can um, either call us on the phone or fill in our form and we will give them a call. Or if you currently work within our referral areas, so that's the whole of Devon, excluding Torbay and Plymouth, Somerset, West of England, Wiltshire and Dorset, you can make a referral on our website. But obviously, you have to have the consent of the the homeowner. Pre-pandemic, we used to do um, all of our assessments in the home as home visits. When the pandemic hit, we thought, gosh, what do we do? Do we shut up shop or do we go onto the phone and online? Um, And actually, we found 99% of people are able to deal with this with the phone or on the internet very successfully. But we are still able to offer um, home visits to clients who would feel more comfortable doing that or need more support or have multi-agency requirements. So the next step, uh, hopefully you all now understand a bit more about the loans offered. You would feel confident confident talking about Lendology and you understand how to make a referral or signpost. If any of you don't and you'd like to have a one-to-one discussion with me or invite me to talk to your team 
more than happy to do that. And if you did want me to um, get in contact with you in six months individually to have a catch up again, more than happy to do that. Have I got some time for questions? Um, a couple of minutes, I think. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So if they that's a really good question. If they could get a loan elsewhere, should we direct them to universal services only? No, um, we're able to lend to people who could borrow elsewhere, but we we were set up to lend to people who were excluded, but now we can lend to people who are fully employed, you know, like ourselves um, as well, which is great. Do they have to have enough equity in the property? Yes, ideally, um, we would look at equity alongside affordability. But, you know, if it was a small loan and there wasn't much equity and it was going to be capital repayment, it wouldn't mean that we would say no, but we would talk through that with the clients. Open to social housing tenants, not currently, although if a council wanted to set up a scheme that was open to housing, um, social tenants or um, private rentals, we'd be happy to discuss that. And then how much of the setup and process has to be managed by officers at the council? Probably about four or five years ago, we went through a massive uh, process review, um, which it sounds like the DFGs are going through now, which is really exciting. But it used to be that the housing officer would have to go out, do a full assessment of the house. Then the client, you know, it, the, the council were very, very involved. And we said, hold on a second. This is a loan, not a grant. You know, it needs to be client led, um, but with support if needs be um, so we completely rewrote the process meaning that actually Lendology manage the whole service and our council partners just receive a monthly report on how many loans we've done how many people we've assessed and it's made it a much more fluid user-friendly process but obviously our council are there if there's complex works so we can say can you go out and do a visit but it's not and you know someone needs a like for like boiler you don't want a council officer going out driving to the house looking at it They're and when the loan needs to be released, driving out saying, yep, that boiler is being done. You know, it's just over the top. Is there an age restriction? Um, no, anybody can apply for a loan. You, obviously, you have to be uh, 18 plus to own a property in this country. So anyone 18 plus can apply. But then um, certain loan products are only available to people over 55. Um, but we would talk through that with the client in terms of repossessions. So our arrears rate is not. 0.18% of our uh, loan book, which is like absolutely eye-watering compared to, you know, any other lender. We're hugely proud of that. And we've never had any, um, we've never enforced any repossessions um, because we've got that title restriction. If someone does uh, say, right, we're not going to pay, we would just sit and wait for the money to be um, repaid when the house is sold. So, yeah, that, again, makes us um, different to other lenders, something we're really uh, proud of. But yes, we do do loans for solar systems, air source heat pumps, biomass, wind turbines. You know, councils are really keen on driving uh, net, the net zero agenda. So, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing in the last 18 months more and more people apply for uh, renewable energy loans. Where does our capital come from it all comes from councils um, so they need to find that capital themselves some of them have got it in different grant pots uh, some of them bid to central government to set up a set up a scheme again um, we can talk to any interested council partners about options for sourcing that original capital to set up a scheme so yeah give us a shout great thank you ellie That's, thank you uh, yeah. thank you for inviting me